Welcome to this week's Eccentric Minute, brought to you by Eccentric. This week's Eccentric Minute is one of my favorite exercises to do with the K-Pulley, and that is the pull-through. Guys, once you've figured out about how far you need to walk out with the K-Pulley, grab whatever attachment you're using for the pulley, walk yourself out there, and really push your hips back at the K-Pulley. From there, when you hit that stretch, really punch your hips forward, keep your chest up, and try to extend your knees and your hips all the way through. And this is where one of the major benefits of using a flywheel kicks in, as it pulls you into a deeper stretch as you push your hips back in, into your hamstrings and your hip extensors, so that you really open it up and stretch everything out in the back. This is an exercise that I'm sure your athletes are going to love to hate, but reap awesome rewards from. I really hope you enjoyed this week's Eccentric Minute. Make sure you check them out at eccentric.com to find out everything you need about the K-Box and the K-Pulley. Being a strength and conditioning professional requires constant pursuit of better knowledge, better methods, and better means. But what if there was a place where strength and conditioning coaches could learn from some of the most innovative practitioners in the world, such as Jeff Moyer, Lachlan Wilmot, William Wayland, James the Thinker Smith, and Kirwenham Flat? Well, you could find multiple lectures from each of these top-level coaches and a few lectures and examples from yours truly as well all in the Strength Coach Network. The Strength Coach Network is going to bring you well over a hundred different lectures from some of the top practitioners in the world to be your one-stop shop for your continuing education and professional development. So hop on over to strengthcoachnetwork.com slash CVASP today and get your 48-hour trial for only a dollar. That's strengthcoachnetwork.com slash CVASPS to get your 48-hour trial for only a dollar. I look forward to seeing you in the Strength Coach Network. What's going on? What's up, bro? What's up? Not much, man. How you doing? I'm doing good. I just got off. Just got off a uh, work. I don't know if I'm supposed to say that live. But working on men's basketball, I was like rushing. They wanted to do like a body weight thing. So I didn't realize what time it was. All good, man. All good. How are things down there? Good. 85 and sunny, so I can't complain. But it's, it's nice. cold here today, man. It was like really? the 30s. Yeah. It was nice for a couple of days, then it rained, and now it's cold. It's like, bro, like what's going on here? Yeah. No, it's 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 nice. It's it's just weird because there's so many um there's so many older people down here and like with the virus and stuff, it's kind of this weird thing of like I would never know anything was different. I mean, there's so many people working and doing stuff that for us, it's been like a couple of weeks where it's been weird of being at home. Like I told my wife, I was like, this is like the vacation I've never had, like <laughs> in my 10 years as a coach. So, um, I mean, it, it's good. I've enjoyed it. It's just, I'm getting stir crazy now. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I think everybody is a little bit. Yeah. So, Maybe think Zoom done that stuff, but it's like, it's getting to a point now where, you know, we're running out of stuff to do. Yeah. Well, I think that's interesting too, right? Like doing that sort of thing, like eventually your ability to do things like that is, you know, like it's almost like you're running an aerobics class. No, that's what, I mean, it was fun. Like that was the first time we did it, but like, you know, it's just, it's going to be making creative and things like that. So. So let's take a, if you're talking about basketball, let's wrap about that a little bit, man. Like, let's look back at the season. What was good? What, what didn't you like? What are some things you think are going to be, I mean, obviously, other than the stuff going on now, like what are some um, things you think are going to be different? Just in terms of the, the, our program, like review of what we've done or just as a yeah. whole, like, say, um, or both. Yeah. Um, I mean, this season, you know, Obviously, it was cut short. Everyone's was cut short. Um, so I feel like we were on a roll towards the end. Um, but I think for us this year, we were – I don't know how to explain it. When I first got here, we had 13 new guys. So my first year here. So it was a whole new – just everything's new. The coaches were new. Um, and then this year, it was like everyone was kind of comfortable with each other. Um and we were in a weird spot with a couple guys that was like a redshirt guy coming back. 
then we had a guy come back from ACL surgery. Um, so I think for us, the biggest thing was trying to figure out who was going to stand out in the pack of our team. And um, I think we finally began to figure that out and then everything kind of got cut. So um, I think just looking back, I think from the training side, I was, I was really pleased with what we did in the sense of like the morpho cycle idea. I know some people have talked about on the strength coach network and Nick DeMarco and stuff like that, but I feel like I got into a good rhythm with training and not overcomplicating it to the point of I was mashing things up of off practice and what I was knowing because I wasn't at practice all the time. Um, so going forward, that's one of my abilities now is I'm going to be able to be at practice because we gained another a part-time assistant. So I got to give some teams up and I'll be able to be at both the men and the women's practices. Um, but I think there's a lot of room for the growth of where we can go with some of the training ideas and diving deeper of like affecting skill and different types of drills and things like that and kind of make it more of that holistic idea. That's what my goal is. Um, one thing we did a bad job is a lot of the, we integrated uh, first beat and I was literally talking to um, Sean from Buffalo and Henry from Liberty the past couple of days of how they implement things, like how they actually do it um, just because I wasn't always to be at practice all the time. So it'd be a back and forth thing of like hoping someone does it, getting the data, giving it. Um, so hopefully now going forward, I'm going to be able to really be hands on with stuff and probably similar to what you kind of do, um, kind of guide and direct more instead of just hope other people are doing things and have more of a, a hands on role with the team. Um, but I think I think the biggest takeaway was like the planning of the week and just putting things certain places I already did, just making it a lot more efficient and matching it up for recovery and things like that. Because the just the smaller issues we had have, have changed a lot and just the breakdown of things. And I think that helped us a ton of just organizing better the training. You want to run down that rabbit hole a little bit? Yeah. Yeah, go ahead. So, I mean, just depending on how we did, I, I can specifically even say with the men's and the women's teams, um, the women's practice times drastically were shortened between year one and year two. Um, and there was different types of players. We, we almost re had another whole new team my second year because we brought a bunch of freshmen. in. so most of our team this year on the women's side was pretty much freshmen and sophomores. Um, so integrating them into the system that we do, but, um, just really taking those like high intensity, high volume, high density, high contact, like taking that idea and kind of shaping it through the week of where we're going to put things and then seeing how practices really are. Um, I think it matched up really well of what I almost naturally did. Um, but trying to simplify, we're still trying to do that with the sports coaches is like how you guys see it and putting it into a language that they understand where we can make actual adjustments um, and they understand what they're actually doing, but we're not threatening them in a way where I'm telling you, you can't do this. I'm telling you, you can do this in certain spots. Um, I think it's been really beneficial. Not to say there's been a bunch of backlash, but it's been more of there's just how can I simplify all these things? And I think that's a huge thing with communication that I've seen is I think people understand what I'm saying because I think I've simplified it, but it may not be direct enough for them to understand it. So I think with the sports coaches, I've found more and more that there are ones that are really, really open to this idea. Um, it's how you get it across to them. And that's like the visual, the verbal, just the senses of how can I feed this information to them so they can make better decisions. Um, but it's still trying to strike that balance between what we see during basketball is even in the off season, they have four hours, we have four hours and really trying to utilize them and them for them to understand their skill time. Can we develop the qualities we need during their skill time so we can use the time that we have for a lot of things we're trying to fit in? Um, and I think that's the balance we're trying to figure out. Now year three, I went from training a bunch of teams to now I'm kind of narrowing back down to a focus on basketball. So I think that's where I've had to kind of just put some ideas out there and hopefully they stick or now I can actually be sitting there and actually direct and guide some things that I've not been able to do. Yeah, no, I could dig that. I I also am curious to see as this goes forward, since you've got teams continue to age, like what happens then? Because this will be – they'll be juniors or seniors this year? 
the the older girls and guys will have a, a heavy load of juniors and, and sophomores coming so that in. will probably continue to drop the practice on that. Yeah. Uh, we'll have interested to see how that flip goes the year after. Yeah, and I think it's it's – I don't know if it's an identity thing. Like, I don't want to say the word like culture and go into the whole, like grab a hold of that. Um, but I think a lot of it is an identity because um, like even our men and women play dramatically different styles. So the way they want to play. Um, so even conditioning versus non-conditioning, like all these things, my men's side doesn't condition. The women want to condition. Um, they play similar, but they, kind of don't and what they project that they want to play like. So it's one thing to say you do, but are we actually doing that? Um, but I think that's where, even on the women's side, it's been more of a, I've not been able just to tell people stuff. So if I'm not physically there, I can have structures and handouts and teach and stuff like that, but it's so much easier if I'm there watching and maybe just balancing some stuff out of like, hey, why don't we just move this girl from this line and put her in the other line? And we can work on this quality a little bit more instead of this quality and getting them to see that. But even as much as I try to explain it, it's still uh, the sports coach versus the strength coach ideas. Um, taking a lot of the things that I've learned, especially from Fergus and being like, okay, how can I project this in a way to get what I want out of it where I don't have to worry as much about trying to get it into the weight room or I'm not doing too much of that same thing in the weight room. Um, so hopefully going forward, then there's a really good balance. Like that's what I'm hoping is that, with me being there, I can just see things more. I can interject more. I can be in staff meetings more um, and really be more parts of the staff instead of just the weight room guy. Yeah, I think that that'll help. I mean, I, it can't hurt at all, right, like, to be able to do yeah. that. Yeah, and I think it's just what you're trying to – I mean, I guess what you're trying – it's like the extra inch or the extra 1% you're trying to find. Um know what is that what is that edge and i feel like that's for us when a lot of people now budget wise and things like that it has nothing to do with budgetary or whatnot it's what we already have how can we optimize what we got and i think we're doing better jobs at that with scheduling and things like that but i think we still have a long ways to go but there's a lot of things we can change and we don't require any money or anything like that um, it's just the willingness to be able to change your ideas to do that all right, man. So I got a, a totally different direction that I I, I want to go, and it's selfish. So if anybody in the chat right now has questions, better start firing them away, or we're gonna go totally graybeard the rest of the Let's way here. It. But no. um, how as a director are you handling this, and what are you looking from your staff when it comes to this, and where do you see things developing for you and your staff? Um, so, I mean, we've, <clears throat> we've pretty much outlined in a Google sheet, um, that everyone has their own tab and, um, it's more for our admins too, to see exactly what we're doing. Cause a lot of them will want to see physical things. I don't know how it is for everybody else. People I've talked to, it's been kind of hit or miss of you're supposed to do things at home, but specifically what is that? So a lot of the tasks that we've talked about either departmentally or for each of us, that you've always wanted to get done, especially for yourself. It might be outlining things and you have something in your head you never got it down on paper. We've taken a document where day by day people can write down everything they're doing and I have a master document of this is what I want to get done by whatever time this is. Um, and I think that's worked really well because it's given the guys autonomy, but I'm starting to see more of that, me telling them more of what I want done too or what I see and some of these ideas and things that, you know, the things that you come up that, like, you have to stop and create. If you don't have it created, you get in that moment at that time, and you're like, crap, i got to get this done, and you can do it now. So there's a lot of pre-made things, I think, that you can make to kind of fit into certain areas. Um, but we've tried to make it as, you know, as normal as possible. We have a weekly staff meeting where we present to each other, um, and then every other week we have one-on-one -on -one meetings. We'll have them tomorrow. And I talk to each guy 30 minutes and it's, it's outside life stuff. It's questions like, you know, um, what's, uh, what's one thing you're struggling with right now? What, like just trying to get outside the box of what we're talking about. Um, and then using social media and stuff. I wrote an article for HMMR about what we've kind of done. So the zoom ideas, 
um, using social media for workouts, which a lot of people are doing, uh, make things like challenge based. So people actually have something to shoot for if they only have body weight. Um, we're using our different mediums like teamworks and stuff like that to send out workouts and get people to, to communicate in their own sense voluntarily, depending on what the rules are, um, where they can stay in contact, that social element. So I think that's the biggest thing. You can do Zoom, you can do whatever, but there's still the missing human component that is why team sports are so great. And it's figuring out how do you connect to that, even if you talk to your guys and your girls and things like that. Um, but, I mean, I, I feel like – for me, it's a little bit different because I'm super, super driven. So, like, I don't need somebody to tell me what to do because I can find something to do if it's research and continue to add stuff like this. Um, I think it's just somewhat structuring that routine is what I've had to do and do it for our staff also because that's where people can get lost really quick of, like, what I'm going to do with the day if I can't go outside and things like that. And it's been a, it's been a communication with our admins, too, of, this is what we're doing. This is what we're trying to do with coaches. Um, Cause I think everyone's trying to jump the gun now of what we're going to do when we get back, but we don't even know when we're going to get back. So you can have all these plans, yeah. but you, that's like, that's the hardest thing is it's all structured base. And, but there's only so much structure you can build right now. So I feel like it's been proud. You could hopefully ask Andrew or Dennis or Jordan, my assistants of, like it's been good downtime, but I think there's a lot of time I know for myself is the creativity aspect is coming back in my mind because I'm not like stuck in basketball mode. And it's just like nonstop where I'm starting to think about stuff and review and things like that. We talked about having things prepared that like pop up. What are some examples of that? Just like, you know, there's a lot of things that we've tried to, uh, we took over the weight room. We shared it with football here. And football got their new facility. So there's a lot of things we did of just the basics of like repainting and doing all this stuff. But we have places where we have different pre-made cards and nutrition and things like that. But really trying to get on top of some of the smaller issues that we have, like with extra workouts, with people having certain issues, if we know that's a problem, if a sports coach comes up to us and is like, hey, so-and-so needs to work on this, like the mental side like looking at all these factors that might hold somebody back and trying to have a very simple, like no more than three steps that I can give you. It's very visual pleasing. It might be a infograph. It might be a picture. It might be something I can throw at you um, to at least get the conversation started in the direction that you're going to go in the right direction instead of the wrong. Um, Cause I think sometimes even as a staff, we'll look at each other like, well, what have you done with your team? And then we might have standardized stuff we do for the whole department. But I think now it becomes like people that don't have very systematic way of doing things for their department, your director. It's a great time to do that because now you can really sit back and view what, what, what are my like holes in my program, like, especially managerial wise. Um, and how can I fix those and fill those? And that was one thing I've kind of seen is that um, it's not necessarily the information we have. It's how we're projecting it to people. And that's one thing I've tried to like, research marketing stuff and just kind of get so outside the box of how can I get the message out better? If I think I have something good and I have good tools, how can I get the message out better? Um, visually, you know, learning wise, all of those factors. I dig it. I think that uh, part of that is it's not even like just the first step. Like that's almost like cheating to win the battle when you have those things that are just like, you yeah, know, the the breadcrumbs leading you to grandma's house, like Hansel and Gretel, right? Yeah. That's cool, man. That's cool. So then where do you see all that evolving to? I mean, I, I, I want it to evolve to the point of, you know, I was, I was thinking about the other, I was talking to Henry actually at Liberty this morning about this. And we were just talking about measuring things and quantifying things. And he was showing me some of the stuff that, he does with his guys, which is like the most visually awesome looking things ever. And just like really going back to some of the stuff that I even struggle with sports coaches trying to quantify to them that I think is approving that I don't have a number or maybe I don't have like a specific note on of like they did better with this. And really going back to what I do, what I believe in and like a top down approach of if I'm starting here with something and going down, do I have something to rate it? Can I quantify it in some way, not only to show an athlete that they're getting better at this, 
but I also can show a coach if the coach ever comes up and is like, have we gotten better at this? Um, and I think there's so many avenues you can go specifically what the coaches want. But for me, it, like there's so many things I think that slip my mind that I think you're just naturally getting better at because you're getting better at this and you might not be getting better at this. Um, so I think that's where I'm kind of at now is like a framework of like how many of the things I do can I actually show progression? Um, cause there's a lot of stuff we talk about. I don't know if you can show progression. Is there a test for it? Is there a form? Is there a, you know, there's all kinds of ways you can go about it, but are you, are you tracking it and also able to show the athlete that they're getting better at it too? Um, so that's where now it's like, can I quantify everything that I'm doing with an athlete? That's a protocol or a method. Can I quantify that they're getting better at it? Um, cause there's a lot of things I have theory about the actual implementation part of it, or the how, um, I kind of look and I'm like, now I don't really have a how for this. I just kind of have it there. And I say, I'm kind of working on it, but I don't think there's any like scale of this, uh, if that makes sense. So that's where we're really going to look back and what I do. Can I rate it? Can I progress it? Can I show up from A to B how you got there in a better way to show other people like the sports coaches and stuff like that? No, totally. Can you give an example of one, though? Um, like just looking into, like, you know, how we break stuff down in our department. It's like, you know, technically, tactically, psychologically, physically and then like the health side of stuff would be like the personal side so like lifestyle recovery things like that and like there's some psychology stuff you know like my background's in psychology those are my degrees are right. so like i'm sitting here seeing things come full circle and then i'm like okay like i'm saying that you need to say have more motivation self-control whatever do i have a measure for that do i have a way of actually getting someone better at this because we all talk about it, but it's very sometimes hard, I think, the implementation-wise, because we think we're doing a good job. Like, this one thing is going to just catch all. Um, so I'm trying to even go back on what the sports coach is telling me. So I've been in one-on-one -on -one meetings with players, and I've been on the phone, and hearing what the coaches are saying, I would write down what strength and conditioning-wise I think they need to improve on. And then I hear the coach say something, and if they go down the route of, you know, mental toughness, grit, like whatever they say, I'm rewriting what I'm saying on the phone before I talk because I'm trying to connect the dots so much that I'm starting to think, well, if they say that, and I may not agree, but that language they're using is not what I would think was the right thing to say, where in that framework of mind is it matching them with what they say? And then how can we actually prove it? Because if a coach is saying that, then me like translating it into something of, then this is the way we're going to actually get it better. Because I think there's so many things I've seen that people on the sports side will tell us that we need to help them get better at if we can or not. But do we have anything in our toolbox that actually can get that better? And do we have a measurement? Of it? Um, and that's where now it's like just looking at everything I do is how practical a lot of things I believe in. How practical are they? Um, instead of just me thinking that's the right answer or it's the best answer. It's not the right thing for the situation. That's like a big, like, big rabbit hole. So it's a good rabbit hole, though, because I think that I think you touched on two really big things, especially at the end there, and that is it's almost like the question of um, like what is our scope of practice? Yeah, yeah, no, it's very true, um, and that's and I'm speaking for myself that I think I want my scope of practice to be more because I was just talking to somebody about this of. In the fall, I had seven or eight teams I was training um, when we lost one of our assistants. So I'm on the ground floor while I'm also on senior staff here. So if I have a valid say or a perspective at a, the seat at the table um, in my interest in administration in the future, I can't do both if I'm on the ground level. So I think me wanting more is me exploring more answers like this can't be it. There's got to be a more or not to say a better way, but I can maybe have more influence because that's what I want to have is impact. I don't care really where it's at, but where can I have the most impact? Um, and the problem solving and things like that for our department, since I'm over most of the teams except football, like I can have my hand in a lot of places, but I also don't want to overstep my bounds into the sporting realm 
I just kind of want to be the, the background guy that maybe just points and just like whispers in people's ears and say, why don't you think about this? And then it doesn't come back to me. It's just like inception. Like everyone thinks that that was their idea. Then let's do that. Like as long as we're more successful. And I think that's what I've, I think I've always naturally had to do that because I've been in a lot of places that haven't been successful when I was there, when I got there. So it's always been like build, build, build. And I think that's where I'm searching for every little piece of thing I can do. But then I collect so much stuff that I don't know how to implement it all. And then I'm just kind of overwhelmed. And I'm like, well, this is really good. And this is really good. And this is really good. Let's try this. Well, it's not this. It's not this. And then I don't have metrics for it. And then I'm like, I thought it would be the new thing that would work in the situation, but it was really, I could have done the old thing and had a measurement that was really good for it. Um, and that's just me being a knucklehead and just my head down mentality and just trying to drive through. So, Yes and no. I think that that's what a lot of us do. I think that when you talk about that, you talk about our little area of sport, right? And you're talking about strength coaches or performance people. Like, There's a lot of people that do try to get – you know, their hands and a lot of cookie jars and stuff instead of saying please and thank you, you know, and, and like instead of sitting there and taking more time to understand like what the language your sports medicine practitioner is using or like actually understanding what your sports psych is actually looking at and talking about, automatically interjecting like mental toughness is BS or something like that, you know, like or like you know, all mental toughness is, is trusting in your training. And it's like, well, maybe they're talking about something different and yeah. you just are putting it in your bucket and being a blockhead about it instead of sitting there and, and just listening, you know, to things. And I think the other thing that you pointed out, like the inception idea, I think it's even better when you can have other people do that. Yes. You know, like, I think that, like, the, the one thing that I've probably learned – the most these last two years and, and I've said this a few times on either my thought Monday or a podcast is like you do you, you work you don't but like people in my position really work for three people and that's my director my sport coaches and my sports med person and sitting there and having Adam and Emily where it's like oh okay well that's oh well we're doing that oh and you're oh and it's like, and then they go, and it's like, because whether we like it or not, they have the medical, like, yeah. they, they have the they have the jack of spades, right? Like, they throw the medical down, and it's like, okay. So I think people that want to sit here and fight with them about stuff, um, they're missing the forest for the trees, you know? Yeah. No, and that's, <laughs> I, I don't know. I, and this is like a kind of a different subject, but it, I guess not a different subject, a different topic going into the same subject is like, I've just realized probably in the past, I mean, I've been a director five years that I don't know who said it, but it was like this, the, the idea of just because it's the best thing doesn't mean it's the right thing. Yes. And I've learned that so much because like, Previous school, I come in, I'm going to do this, this is the best thing, just training wise. Here I came in, kind of hands open, just listen to people, what's going on, um, just developing those relationships and things like that. But just like the mental toughness thing you said is like, I think if it's language, if it's communication, whatever, we're just so quick to become defensive that someone's challenging me. Because like I've seen even myself, like I've looked at other people in the profession, like one of my interests is like diving more into the outside coaching and helping people with outside their realm with their family and things like that. And I told my wife, I said, I've looked at other people and I've literally said, I am like better than them, like a better husband than them. But to my wife, I'm not a very good husband. And because my standard is compared to what that person's doing, but I'm not even really looking at what a, my own standard is. I'm just looking at someone else or you're really good in one area, so you assume you're really good in everything else. Like, I'm really good at this, so I'm really good at everything else. And then you actually open your ears finally, and people are like, no, you come off this way. Like, you come off this way. Um, and that's what I've seen so much within strength and conditioning. I'm speaking for myself because 
I will get defensive. Even if I've researched it, I think it's the best thing. You guys talk about it at the conference, whatever, and I give it to a coach. I'm like, no, nah, I don't think we're going to do that. And then you're like, I have done all this work. I've read it's the right thing. Um, but it's if it's not the right thing at that time, even though it's the best thing, then that's where I think we get so defensive and we get so hurt. And then especially you add the layer of someone above you that might be having the keys to the Ferrari, like sports med, then it's like there's a whole nother avenue of what you're trying to work around to do. And then it's like, well, I only get to do 70% I want to do of the 100%. Um, so I think that's just – I think it's just the awareness piece for me has been the biggest thing. And I've done a lot of that reflection wise during this time, because I'm like, I may think this is, I may change my personality. I may change this. I may change that, but is it still, and how is it coming off in a certain way to people? And I think that's half the battle. I think that's half the part of what we're getting into. Cause I've, I know a lot of coaches that on the strength side that just complain, complain, complain. But I'm thinking, is that the way you come off to your coaches all the time too? Is that why you don't get to do anything you want to do? Um, so I think it's very multifaceted, but it's, I don't know. I think a lot of it's our fault. Like, I'm, I'll be honest. I really do. Um, it's just how, how do we do better at that is the humility aspect. There's a great talk by a guy on Strength Coach Network. Go to strengthcoachnetwork.com slash CBAS, and you can find the talk by Chris McCormick just on that topic. Had to get that yeah. plug in. Um, yeah, I wrote, I wrote about it. And I still, <laughs> but some I still, I mean, it's. It's just it blow. That's like the one like thing that blows my mind. It's just like how how do you just do better at that? Because yeah. you talk to people, you see their situation. You're like dang, like they got to figure it out. And then you're like maybe I've just been in some unique situations. You know what I mean? But could be. Great question from uh, Coach Fisk up in New Jersey. Uh, you mentioned implementing things. Have you implemented anything department wide this year? And what was your opinion of how it went? <sighs> My answer is no. I yeah. did. So it's on you. <laughs> Let me think. I mean, I'm trying to think. I mean, within the staff, the one on one meetings, I think, have been the best thing. My assistants may disagree, but I think it's been the best thing. Um, and just some of the questions, because we've had meetings, we've had Skypes with people, like we've done it every different way that you've seen on social media and people promoting. The one-on-ones have been great, even though I'm really close to my assistants, um, just giving that time. Um, speaking for us, because we we finally have the weight room to ourselves. We've never had that. So we came, we were sharing an office with football staff too. There's eight people in this little office. So you can't really get a lot done productivity-wise. Um, I'm trying to think department-wise – what we've implemented. I might have to think about that one. Well, I mean, that is your department. Yeah. I don't know if you meant your department or athletics department was. Yeah, I mean, I think I think that would probably be the one because I think that's had a ton of influence on just us because there's been a lot more things we can implement within a department when you're not sharing a room with somebody that you necessarily don't do the same things. Like it's a whole nother ball game. Like you think about it of people like it's just a different situation. You know what I mean? So I came here and that's all I've experienced for a year and a half. And the last school I came from, I was the director over football and men's basketball and had complete control. So if I tell somebody they have to leave and it's not my athlete, who's going to say yes or no, you know what I'm saying? So that's, it's a whole nother realm of it. Of, I feel like we're almost like reborn into our department for now. It's like, this is our space. Um, so implementing our ideals of the weight room and things like that. And there's a lot of things that we all saw that a lot of people say are important that I don't think are important. And there's a lot of things that people take for granted that are very important to the structure of the department. Um, so that might be a better answer for that question. S and C with coaches you supervise and or with athletes on the floor. Oh, you mean like training wise? But well, we'll get back to that because I actually have a question that you brought up yeah. about something earlier. And you said you've been meeting with the your staff and you've been asking questions and, and you've asked them what they've been having a hard time with. What has been what you've seen the most? that they've been, is there been any commonalities that they're having a hard time with right now? 
how can I generalize this? Um, I mean, I think a big thing, I have a very young staff. Um, every person I was ever under was older than me or was married. All of my assistants are all unmarried, and this is their first, like, full-time job. Um, so there's a lot different, I guess, generationally-wise that's a different between us. Um, I think the biggest thing they initially struggled with was when we shared with football. And it was like just having you have two ideals kind of going at it and somebody gets the majority of the time and that's just being honest. I think that was the biggest thing. I think now it's um, it's not I don't want to say handling responsibility, but I think it's the balance between asking for more and then fitting it into your schema of how much more can I take on because you want responsibility and you want these things. Um but can you actually handle them in the day to day? Because um, if that makes sense, because mm-hmm. like I'm someone, and my wife's watching. She uh, she'll say I'm bad at delegating. My assistants will say like I'm just bad because I'm 110 miles an hour, head down. I'm gonna get it done. It's got to get done. And I've been in situations where I'm the only person. It's so, like it's got to get done, so I'll do it. Um, but I think finding in these um, these meetings too is like getting to the root of, especially career wise where people want to go and people know the steps to get there. Cause a lot of people say they want these titles and I've been very transparent with my staff and everything. Like I've told them, I want you to meet with our supervisor. I want you, when you send emails, attach our supervisor to it. She will want to see it. Um, I want you to hear everything as much as I can. Cause I don't want you to get blindsided when you become a director, but I want you to tell me, in five years, where do you want to be? And when you tell me that, I'm going to say, well, this is what you're going to have to do. And these are the things you don't even know about that I don't even tell you. Um, do you really want this position? Do you really want this title? Or do you just want to train one team and that, that's it? Like, that's what you want to focus on? And I think there's a big misconception in our field about being a director versus being just with one team. And you think it's the same thing. So if you get the title of director. Um, because, I mean, more than half of my job has nothing to do with training athletes. That's my escape. Mm-hmm. Um, so I think those two things are probably the biggest. Um, but that's something I may not even ever think about because, I, again, the perception aspect. It's like, I think you're understanding. I think you're seeing these things. I think I explained it to you, but maybe I didn't. That's my fault. But yeah. if you want this, I'm going to give you the path to get there. But – I was always thrown into the fire. I necessarily don't want you to have that, but um, I want you to really figure out, is this what you really want? Like, do you really want this? And if you don't, then I'm telling you, you don't have to. It's fine. Like, don't become one. But if you can't handle these other things and talk to admins and put different hats on and do all that, you don't want that, then don't say you want to do this because you're just saying, I think that's the next step in my career. That may not be for you. That's fine. Yeah. So I dig it. No. So, uh, Coach Fisk got back to us. Yeah, that's what he was talking about, like, training-wise. I do have an answer for that, but you go first. Okay. Um, I would say for myself, and this kind of bleeds into my staff, um, because we all do things a little bit different. We have the same philosophy, the same values. um, Because I think really implementing, um, like, a morphocycle idea, like really hitting home with that, um, with our our department of being like, this is when we're going to do certain things based upon what your sport is doing Um, and just having a better clarity of where we're going to fit certain things and not just from strength and conditioning. Like I'm going to do this because they're going to cover so we can do this hard in the weight room again. It's very balanced of how we want to spread things out compared to what the demand is. Um, And some of us naturally did that, but having those discussions of like, all right, if we're going to lay it out for each team, we can put these things that you want to do and it fits in this category. Let's put it here on this day. What do you think about that? Um, and really trying to bridge that gap between the, the, the sport um, and the weight room. Um, but I mean, in terms of training methods and things like that, I don't know how much has really differed. Like we got a couple K boxes, so we've been doing some stuff with K boxes. Um, but I've also had a new assistant, I got two new assistants, so there's been some change in that and what they do, one of them which already worked for me, so I knew what he did, and the other one 
<clears throat> very similar philosophy, like I said. So I think this year will be the year where we really are going to implement a lot of new stuff because there was, there's been so much change for us. Mine's been more philosophical and I don't mean like five, three, one or do you Olympic lift or like power lift. I mean more like, like actually like philosophical, like how I look at like what the guys do. And, um, as we've had this team that's gone through a lot, they've grown up a lot and they've learned a lot. Uh, they've put up with a lot, especially yeah. from me. So it's really been mostly about how we can better impact their routines. And then on top of that, how they can build these routines. You know, you've worked in basketball long enough, like, you know that there's some guys that are borderline allergic to the weight room in season, and there's guys that do all these things that completely go against all of these old fables about how if you lift too much for your upper body, your jump shot goes to shit and all that, you know? Um, case in point, like just, you know, I did a My Thoughts Monday about these these three guys, and it's it's even more guys, you know, it's – I had two guys that did two upper body lifts, extra lifts between every game for the last 10 weeks of the season. And it's simply like, well, why is this the routine we want to build? I feel better when I do this. And when I feel better, I play better. Okay. I feel like because I'm a freshman, I need to get stronger. And I think that this is an easy way to do that. Okay, like Jay in 2011, if, or 2010, if that was one of my guys coming at me, if that was like a, a Francis Martel who was younger or a Darian Brothers who was younger, I would have physically got the rocks, dropped them at their feet, and told them to start effing kicking, you know? Um, but it doesn't matter, Yeah. right? Like, that's what they think. I had a guy who... He didn't get a lot of burn in games. Um, and then one day he did. Like, and you've all, we've all seen this, right? The guy who doesn't get a lot of run, and all of a sudden he's getting run, and he gets run out of the gym. Like, he's, it's just down, back, down, back, down, back. And you can literally watch his gas tank meter just go. Yeah. And it's not, it's not my fault. It's not the kid's fault. It's not the coach's fault. He just hasn't done it. Yeah, You know, like, you, you put an Iron Man into an MMA cage and they're going to be gassed in a minute and a half, right? Like, yeah. you just have never done it. But he's like, I need to do something weekly to be in better shape. And it's like, okay, what do you, you know, you've, your knees have been sore, so let's go to the bike. Okay, cool. How about we do something that's, like, pretty intense but fast, though? I don't want to be here all day. Okay, cool. What do you think of this? Yeah. Perfect. Did it game day, uh, game day plus one. Every day, every week, so twice a week for the last seven weeks of the season. It's like, again, it's like, is that really fixing our problem? No. But I think that them understanding and having ownership of that routine, whether it be like those guys or it be like specific guys stretch on these days and specific guys shoot on those days and like all of that stuff, like them building the routine and instead of sitting here and trying to, like, like be the curler with the broom and make it go a certain way, maybe just listening and guiding them to do what's best for them and yeah. seeing is, is more important. Yeah, and that's exactly, um, that's exactly I guess, you said it really a really a lot better way. Uh, what I meant by, like, the awareness piece, too, is, like, there's certain things, and, like, where the – two of the one by 20 guys, you know what I mean? Like we're one of those, and like I do some of it, but I use a lot of the principles too, because I've done it with certain things and it's not worked out. Yep. You're back. Um, it, we, we argue so much of like what our side can do 
for athletes. Like they need to be with us more instead of practicing more. And we get in these battles back and forth, but we all, we, we accuse the sports coaches of it, but that's where I say it's our fault a lot of times too, because we also lose sight of what's the most important thing is and that's, that's the performance. So that's where like the protocols and things I was talk, talking about too, is like, we're, I'm creating these things of like all of these tools. If I want to build conditioning, if that's what the coach calls it, then what methods and how many ways can I do it? If I'm inside, outside, how, and literally I can pull out and go, this is what we're going to do for you today. And if they just, and I mean, if they walk into the weight room and they don't have to, and they come in, shoot you out, we're going to do something because you came in. So that's like you said, create the habit. Um, so that's where I'm like racking my brain now is like, okay, how many things do I do instead of looking for more brand new stuff, the new methods? What can I do and how can I better categorize it? So when it comes time, when you get in a situation like that, how can we implement it? If it's three weeks, four weeks. If, if I figure out that is the key for that kid, because um, you don't want it to get to the point where it's too late. And then it's like, all of a sudden they do that and they've been doing this. Um, but I've, I've been the same way. It's like, you're going to do it this way because it's the best way until you start doing things that um, essentially make it where it's going to get to the end result you want. If you're doing extra conditioning on the bike, if you're doing arm farm, like I know some people that are against that kind of thing, and I used to be in the clients, but now I'm, like, I'm not plugging. So what makes me think is going to lead to the performance may not be the right thing. It's what the athlete thinks. No doubt. So. Bro, and that's the thing, too, and you said, it, you said it great. Like the one by 20 things, it's like, is it following the general principle of it, which is simple, borderline stupid progressive yeah. overload like yeah. those two guys that did the upper body lifts four days a week like it, it, this group's different too like though they bust balls better than anybody i ever met and nobody's safe jokes are coming buddy like put on your helmet yeah it's like hey uh you've used that weight like four lifts in a row hey something probably exceptionally inappropriate would be said and then it's just like all right, well, we'll bump it up then. And it's like, well, yeah, dude, like, it's been four times. Either bump it up or, or change your exercise. And I'm just standing there like, okay. Yeah. That's really it. Yeah. Yeah. It's that simple. Like, you know, like, yeah. No, you want to do dumbbell bench? I'm not going to fight you over it. Oh, you're going to change the incline. No, I'm not, I'm not going to fight you over it. Okay, keep having fun. Yeah. No, I mean, it's, uh, I talked to uh, Travis Naya, uh, Gonzaga. And we went back and forth about certain things. And he's like telling me about their culture. And if I were to tell, even if my coaches are on here, so like some of the stuff he told me, I'm like, if you were to talk to coaches or people that come in that mentality of all these different things, discipline, blah, 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 whatever you want to say about what makes teams good, culture or whatever. He told me stuff. I'm like, they win like 30 games a year. Like, and that and that's where it's like okay because he's not that way either. he's very just like what would you like to do we have multiple options for you things like that so it's that balance obviously in the setting that you're in um, but I don't I don't know where I learned half the stuff that I, I have to be that way I don't know if it's because I've seen it work so it's like the gospel it's not it it's what the athlete thinks gonna work for them because I want that to trump everything so we can be successful when it comes game time and I'm the first one to say that. But I'm actually practicing that. So if I don't have the awareness, I'm like, yeah, well, whatever makes you ready to go, we'll do that. But you're going to do this. Like, that doesn't make any sense. Um, so I think that's where I've tried to backtrack and just kind of step out of my situation and look at it. And go, what am I doing? Well, like, I think most of them, though, understand why, what's important to you and why it's important. And I think yeah. that those are the things that, like, you know, when you talk with kids about what's helping and what doesn't, like most kids hate squatting. But typically they don't say, well, squatting's stupid. Like they know yeah. there's a purpose to it. So it's like, you know, they, they're 18 to 22 year old nitwits, but they're not stupid. Like they understand. For sure. But yeah, you know what I think too, that like, we talked about this a little bit yesterday uh, with, with Zach, you know, we we're talking about culture and building that like, I think a lot of people think it starts with the coaches, and I, I disagree, I, especially today. I think that starts like a hundred percent with the guys. Like oh, if yeah. you got good dudes or, or good young ladies in the locker room that are willing to work together, 
um, can get on each other, like good, bad, or indifferent. All, you know, if you got a bad apple or two, they're either going to get weeded out or, like, they're just not going to last. Like, they just won't, because yeah. they're just not going to stand for it. They're just going to be like, unless that person is like a 20 and 10 guy, you know, they're just going to be like, no, like, get, get out of here. Like, you know, and it's easy to spot that part. When that starts right. happening, you can smell it a mile away. Yeah. No, I agree. It's I don't know. It's that's a good way of saying it because um, I think there's so much that we think can impact some of those things, and it doesn't if you don't have some of the base things first. Like the little things we can do can help, but I mean, if it's coach led, player led, team like however you want to go about it, like if the players aren't doing that, and I and I, I'm the one too, like. I want, like, we have a bunch of great guys here. I've been around teams that have had a bunch of great guys. I've been around some teams that have been really good that there's guys who are just like, I don't know how you even made it here today. Like, it's just they go at each other. They, and it's finding that and striking that balance of I, I want to have athletes that listen, but I also want some dogs, too, that are going to get after it. And I want to say push the limit, but that's what I want, too, because I know that's going to help us. But we need a majority of the other side um, to be successful. Um, I think long term, but I agree one hundred percent. I want guys and, and women to work with that understand and are open to contributing. I think sometimes the worst thing that you can have are you know, people that are just like they just fall right in and do everything that's told to them, and it's like, yeah, like people. Like, What's the word I'm trying to look for here? I can't believe I'm having a brain fart, but I think people confuse obedience with mental toughness. Yeah. Where it's yeah. like they just do what they're told. Well, are they tough or are they a robot? You know, like if I want something to do what it's told, I'll just open my MacBook. You know, like if I want to know, yo, is this working? Like, are we doing the right thing here? Like, y'all good with this? I know that. My big guy and my point guard don't think so. I go to them first, and it's like, boom. And then I can go to the guy that started at the three for us, and he's going to say, I think this part's stupid. And you're going to say, why? And he's going to tell you why. And it's like, yeah. okay, well, we're not going to do that anymore. Yeah. It's like, you know, you got to the, the, the age of because coach said so, it, it's treading water at best. Yeah, no, and I think it's especially in basketball because there are stoppages and stuff like that. But if you don't have players that are able to do that and even do that with each other, I mean, it's it's one of those things that you can talk about all you want in practice in the weight room. If you have all this stuff set up that you follow X, Y, and Z, but when chaos and things hit the fan, it's like, what do we really have? And I think that's that's what you want in a player um, and especially a group. And I'm sure that's probably you guys had a lot of success this year. I think that it has something to do with it. Yeah. I think that, you know, they had, they had a chip on their shoulder a bit too, which helps. But Yeah, no, for sure. Listen, homie, I appreciate it, man. It's been a killer hour. And, uh, it's always great to see you. Really glad you're doing well. A little mad that you're 40 degrees warmer than us today, but I'll deal with that myself, you know? It's not bad outside. Can't complain. Yeah. Uh, so. I'm, I'm in a hoodie, so it's <laughs> – I'm in, I'm in the richest city in the United States, so <laughs> you're in the slums, and I'm in the friggin' Ritz Carlton. Yeah, it's it's nice for you down there, but appreciate the time, bro. This was awesome, and we'll catch sure. up. Yeah, man. See you, man. See ya.